what's up guys? Simon Chang here back at Target Training with episode two of our podcast I'm here with Jesse Krona, owner and operator of Target Training. So after the egg podcast, we got a lot of questions kind of like I was saying, isn't that too much protein? Isn't that too much fat? Uh, so basically just a lot of macro questions. So we wanted to go over some macros, give details of what we do here. So let's just get started. So the first question I basically have for Jesse of what we do here is um, what's the importance of tracking your macros if it is really important? Yeah, it's a huge one that uh, you get all the time. You know, really people get into the, you know, I would say more of the busy work and missing the main point of what you're trying to do and they're tracking, tracking macros. And that's why I'm calling it like kind of just doing extra work for the point of not doing extra work mm-hmm. when you don't really even have to. Uh, you know, in certain situations, definitely you have to get a lot more specialized and track them exactly and, you know, figure out exactly what you want to do carbohydrate-wise, fat-wise, protein-wise. You know, there's a lot of different people in here with different goals, and in some situations that has to happen. If a guy has to get super, super lean, like, you know, towards the end of a bodybuilding contest prep, or if, uh, let's say, super, super lean for the end of a combine prep where, you know, when you're running, you want to strip off all the body fat, that can be a case where I am tracking exact macros, but other other than that, I really don't do that. So that's you know probably something that's a bit uh, different in other places. Everyone you know feels like you have to know exactly how many you know grams of carbs, how many grams of protein, how many grams of fat you're eating a day, and really get crazy into tracking all that. And I've never done that. Doesn't uh, and I have to say it doesn't. I don't think it makes a difference. I'm, when I'm going to say never, I, I you know I'm, over all the years that I've trained people, there might have been sometimes the beginning where I did it, but also intuitively from what I know about food and know about how food, you know, affects your results for performance, no matter what your goal in the gym is, it's uh, something that's not important. It, it's something that's really sold to people as important as a way a lot of times to, you know, sell certain supplements or sell certain fad diets, you know, fad diets where you have to say, okay, let's get rid of all the fats out of your diet. Let's go low carb. Let's go high protein. So everyone knows there's all these like, you know, different fad diets where, you just get rid of a whole food group. And I've never been a believer in that because for long-term results and long-term health, you know, I've always felt you have to have every single macronutrient in basically even proportions and have them in unprocessed foods. Mm-hmm. So on top of that, the even proportions, get in. can you get into a little bit more detail on that, why that's important? Well, general, you know, for, for long-term, what I always say is like what we do in here is a lifestyle. So for long-term health, we're just going to bring long-term results because, you know, you don't want to be just in the game for a month or two months. It's not about just a short term. You have to have a longer-term vision. What's going to allow you to get like real massive results and big gains towards your whatever goals you have, whether athletic or bodybuilding or, you know, a certain aesthetic look. Those type of goals only happen when you consistently can be in the gym and make gains day after day, week after week, month after month. So if you're doing something that just works in the short term but doesn't allow you to work in the long term, you're never really going to get to that high level mm-hmm. goal because you're not you're going something's going to happen. Like there could be an injury, there could be inflammation issues in your body, there could be digestive issues, and then you know you're going to be put out. You're going to be out out of the gym. You're not going to be able to train, and when you can't train, like no matter how good something could have worked for a week or a month. If it causes you to have to miss, you know, weeks or months later on, then it's just always going to be two steps forward and two steps back. And, you know, we're not yeah. looking to do that. With big goals, you need to make those consistent moves daily, weekly, monthly to lead to something big over time. So to, to do that over time, you have to be healthy. So everything that I always go from, no matter what it is, it's always starting with making you as healthy as possible. And to be as healthy as possible, and you heard me talk about this in the other podcast, and I'll keep harping on it, you need to have every single food group because they all have certain things they do in your body that are very, very important. When you limit one of them for too long, those things start going wrong in your body and actually start affecting other things. And then there's like a cascading negative health effect. Instead of creating vitality, you're creating a lot of, uh, you know, ill health, which is not going to lead to any type of gain in the gym whatsoever. It's going to lead to problems outside of the gym. And then, of course, that's going to mean you're not going to get what you want in the gym. And to go a little bit more into, let's say, the breakdown of uh, what you were saying about, you know, even, the other important part of that, too, is because for your body to absorb nutrients properly, you have to, you know, get a lot of vitamins and minerals into your body. And for that to happen, every single food group is going to be important over the long term. And that's why it's not just about, you know, calories in, calories out. It's not just about if it fits your macros, because what has to happen over the long term is you have to create a, a metabolism that allows you to achieve those goals. So let me just, you know, give an example of that. When I'm when I'm talking about that, I can, you know, if something works short term, but then all of a sudden it shuts your, let's say, thyroid down, like when you have no carbs, for instance, then, you know, later on, that's going to cause you to gain fat. So over the short term, let's say you had almost all fat and you lowered your carbs to almost nothing. 
like something like let's say you know a ketogenic diet and you have your protein in there but it's mostly fat that type of uh you know diet long term is going to have negative effects over the short term yeah you're going to lose glycogen and you're going to lose water you know pulling uh and your muscles going to end up being a lot flatter and you're going to lose weight you know on the scale if that's your goal let's say so you know all of a sudden now oh i lost a lot of weight i lost 10 pounds in a week great but really all you lost is like a lot of it is water weight and then later on when you start burning fat as a fuel source you will lose body fat stores as well so i mean that that type of uh, diet can work to lose body fat in the short term but then if you think okay can i stay on this long term the answer is going to be no and if you do try to stay on the long term a lot of times you will have issues but you know on the other hand it also has to do with a person's goals if someone is very insulin resistant and they're having a lot of problems with uh, carbohydrates then going on something that's you know high fat towards the ketogenic end of things can actually help their me you know metabolism later on so they can actually mm -hmm. use carbs again so that's what i mean it, it does have to do with the actual particular person's goals so i always take every single person as an individual and then i see what their actual goals are and what their health status currently is and to help that health status sometimes we might have to do you know a diet where it's more limiting in one of the macro groups but overall later on you want to get back to the state of the you know body where you're absolutely healthy and you can use all the macronutrients properly and that's when you want to have that balanced uh, diet so sometimes over the short term you know a limiting diet can be good where you get rid of one of the one of the actual macros but over the long term it's not something you want to do and if someone is you know healthy it's also something you don't want to do yeah so basically what we do here is almost like a one-third of each one-third of your calories from fat one-third from protein one-third from carbohydrates just as a a baseline as jesse was saying if adjustments need to be made if you're prepping for a combine you need to sh shred some fat we might change things take out carbs etc um and you, we also he was just talking about the if it fits your macros so there was questions on that people are saying um why can't i just do that if i'm tracking my macros and what's the importance of that i had a lot of questions about that and my main answer was um, I usually just eat whole foods essentially for the vitamins and nutrients because that's a little bit not as it's equally important as getting your macros. But do you want to touch upon that a little bit more? For sure. Like a lot of these questions you're going to hear, you know, from this, there's going to be some overlap with them. But that the reason for that is because general health principles always kind of stand the test of time and they're very true. So the, kind of the answer to every question is similar. But there'll be some differences as well. But you're gonna, you guys are gonna notice the overlap. So with if it fits your macros, again, it's gonna cause later on it could, it could cause something to happen that's you know seems successful in the short term, but later on it's gonna cause health problems. So like, let's say how I said, if you go to almost no carbs long term, that's gonna shut your thyroid health down, and then all of a sudden you're not able to burn body fat, yeah. you know, as easily after a while. Or it's also gonna shut down your hormones, like your actual. Let's say if you're if you're a guy, you want to have high testosterone levels at their maximal, you know, capabilities. That's going to also not happen. If you shut the carbs down to almost nothing or very low on the carbohydrates, what you're going to notice is that your actual, you know, testosterone does go down. And you can actually feel a difference that your workouts start being sluggish and there's, you know, all, there could be all sorts of problems. You're, and you're going to notice that. So now, so that's what can happen, let's say, if you limit carbohydrates. Now, let's just talk about what, a few things that could happen if you do something like if it fits your macros. Over the short term, just like when you lower your carbohydrates, that could seem to have a good result. Like you're tracking your exact calories, right? So a lot of people will be like, oh, to lose body fat, all you got to do is be in a calorie deficit. So on paper, that is correct. That is what happens. But also it, your metabolism has an effect on that. So based on your activity, what we want to do here, what I always tell people, I want to create your, you know, your, met, your metabolic rate to become like a furnace. That the point is that you, any calories you ingest, you've now created a metabolism that those calories almost all go to either gaining muscle are being used as an energy source and not stored as body fat because what we try to do is create you know almost every goal people want that lean physique whether it's someone trying to run fast you know body fat doesn't help them run fast we want to shred a lot of body fat someone who wants to look good same thing body fat doesn't look good so we want to shred it someone is trying to achieve a look for a bodybuilding contest again the same thing so overall you want to create a metabolism that's running high like a furnace that's just using the actual calories as an energy source or to uh, maintain or gain muscle so the way you do that is with natural foods and because the reason for that is because the natural foods will create a metabolism to do that with all the vitamins and minerals and other micronutrients that are in those natural foods. If you're doing something like if it fits your macros at the beginning, yes, on the calorie surplus, the deficit scale of things, it does work. But then over time, what's going to happen is if you're doing that with a lot of processed foods, it's not going to create the metabolism you want. It's going to create a lot of yeah. problems in your body. Then eventually, whatever goals you have, whether to gain muscle or lose body fat, they're not going to happen. So a lot of things that seem to work in the short term are not going to be sustainable because 2000 it doesn't matter what anyone tells you overall for the way your body will work because of the micronutrients involved and this is something you know i've harped on here and i harped on in the last one 
it's about those micronutrients just as much or more than the macronutrients. So it's not just those fats, carbs, and proteins that are important. If you say, you know, 2,000 calories of donuts is the same as 2,000 calories of chicken breast, it's not the same. Like, I understand that, you know, if when you talk about it fits your macros, we're talking about the actual, actual macronutrient groups and the donut would be, you know, more carbs and the chicken is more protein. So I'm not saying it like that. But what I'm saying is that, like, 2,000 calories is not necessarily 2,000 calories when we replace processed foods with unprocessed foods. It just isn't. So, I mean, if you want to believe it, it is, you know, go ahead, test it out yourself. Everything I'm saying here, you know, I always tell you guys, like, verify it. The science is out there. And you're going to have maybe some science that says against some of these things. But in the end, more than science, it's about your actual intuition having like what just makes sense from a logical level. What's going to work better? Foods that are actually more natural or foods that are more processed and that have been created, you know, by literally man-made. Things, when you think from a logical level, from an intuition standpoint, you're going to know what the answer is to that. Things that happen sometimes in the laboratory are not exactly what happens in real life. So when I talk about these things, it's stuff that, I, you know, I've gone on. As far as me being in a gym every single day for basically 20 years and being around a lot of high level athletes being one myself before and then in, from the training aspect training people from a part-time uh, basis from 2004 and then from a full-time basis since 2009 and having my own gym and again dealing with hundreds if not thousands of uh, high performance athletes seeing what actually really works in real life and i always say that to you guys whatever i say always and whatever else someone else says Look at the actual results and look at the sustainability of those results and the long-term health of it. Mm -hmm. With me, you can see, you just look at the, you know, like I said, look at the pictures of people in the gym, no matter what their goals are, and you see the body composition. So that I'm encouraging you to look, not just to say, oh, I'm showing off what goes on in here, but I'm telling you for yourself, for your own health, how you can have long-term sustainable results for yourself. Like if you want to yeah. bodybuild and you're 18, 19, 20 years old, you know, it might be something you want to do till you're 40, 50, 60 years old. So you want to do it in a way that allows you to do that and enjoy a long bodybuilding career, not just be a flash in the pan type of bodybuilding career that's over in two, three years because it looked good for a while. And then all of a sudden there's all sorts of issues, like I said, with inflammation and digestion. Those are, I mentioned those because those are a lot of times when you do the wrong thing, those are the ones that come up because overall body inflammation and there'll be a lot of digestive issues. And you see a lot of people doing the wrong things eating wise with if it fits your macros, it's going to cause a lot of metabolic issues where later on you're actually yo-yoing back and gaining more fat than you had to begin with. Big time metabolic damage or you're causing and or because sometimes it's both. You get actual huge digestive issues and people later on getting Crohn's, colitis, diverticulitis, all sorts of different uh, you know issues in the digestive tract. And those are stuff you have to stay away from if you want to stay in this long term. If you're an athlete, you know, same thing. You might be an 18, 19, 20-year-old athlete. You want to stay competitive and athletic at a high level, you know, until your 30s, 40s, and maybe beyond. So what I'm talking about here is a way it is actually like the holy grail of being able to do that by sticking to actual natural foods that can actually give you the macros you need, but also the more important micronutrients you need and be able to keep mm -hmm. you in the game or whatever game you've chosen to be in, you know, long-term and enjoying yourself long-term. Being That's what it's all about. It's about being supremely healthy. So you can actually not just look strong or look fast or look, but actually be those things because you really are healthy and it's something that can last. It's not just something that, you know, is a short term thing. Yeah. And something I really noticed just with eating the way I've been, I mean, I've been doing it for the past seven years since I've trained here. I mean, not only have, I feel like I've been gaining strength faster than others, but my recovery is a lot better. My sleep's a lot better. My stress levels are better. I mean, I just have more energy during the day. And you know, I've, I've, I've gone to university, I've eaten bad, and I, I literally, I, I can taste the difference between water. I know the difference between those foods, I feel it. And you know, I really believe in it. That's why we're here today. And I feel like that's played a huge part of my success. Um, another thing we wanted to cover is kind of the importance of the timing of food. Like, should I, so sh if I'm doing, uh, eating all my whole foods like when should i have them should i have all these high carbs all my carbs the day before my workout or sh do i need to hit that protein window after do i need to have that chicken breast or protein shake after so that's also something we want to touch upon here i'll let jesse take over yeah well, let's uh let's go over that but also <laughs> let's go on the question just previously as well because they're gonna have to do with each other again and there'll be some overlap so just to give you guys examples a lot of the stuff with what simon just mentioned about hitting that you know window of opportunity and if you don't have a certain amount of protein after you work out like all your gains are gone mm -hmm. you know you have to be super anabolic you're super anabolic after you work out and that's when your body's the most receptive to the protein to gain the muscle and all that a lot of that stuff has to do with the way supplements are sold and the same thing with the previous question uh, with the way supplements are sold. And what I mean by that is like, you know, you see a lot of people taking 
uh, maltodextrin as far as you know sugar and products maltodextrin and protein together dextrose maltodextrin and protein together mm -hmm. different i don't want to call any you know particular company out but there's companies that have a sh that's not a sugar but a starch powder uh, there's companies that have different forms of uh you know dextrose or maltodextrin that have been tweaked a little bit to become something else and in the end what i'm talking about here these are supplements these are powders these are isolated nutrients they don't have the full power of the whole food yeah. where you're actually getting the you know the, the macronutrient like a carbohydrate for instance but you're not getting the micronutrients that just leads to problems when you just look at something let's say in a laboratory setting and be like okay what carb source makes the guy go as fast as possible and then recover as fast as possible and they have someone on you know let's say um, well we'll say what a big drink like gatorade you know you see in the testing what what on when they have those pictures of someone on a treadmill you're just looking at something in a snapshot of what's going on at that moment you're not looking at the long-term effect of like pumping yourself full of those powdered sugars or mm -hmm. powdered starches that aren't they're actually just isolated nutrients instead of a whole food what happens over time goes back to what i was saying before you get a lot of inflammation and digestive upset and then there's just a lot of problems later on that the person becomes unhealthy now with with uh same thing with like nutrient timing like when people go with that sometimes they can end up taking you know there's nothing wrong with a lot of protein after you work out but what i'm saying is your body again is not stupid like how i said with the egg thing and it's just and it's just really weird like people you know, have no problem pumping a ton of these powders, whether it's like powdered proteins or powdered carbohydrates. But then when you tell them some, you're having 15, 20, 30 eggs a day, it's like, oh, wow, like that's crazy, you know? Yeah. But meanwhile, what they're doing is more crazy. Like the actual whole, f the real food will never do you wrong as long as it matches your goals. And what I mean by that is like, if you're hungry enough to eat 20 eggs, you know, your body is hungry enough to do that for a reason. Like if someone's training for hours a day, is is a very active let's say has an active job where they're up on their feet all the time their metabolic needs are going to be a lot higher and if they if their their body will you'll notice like this even just to go over it a lot of girls when they first start training you know their big thing is they want to lose weight so when they first start training they start getting hungrier and they'll ask me jesse like i'm hungry i'm eating more is that bad and it'd be like because they're they're thinking if they eat more it's going to make them gain more body fat when it's the exact opposite is what i was telling you guys before it's about creating that furnace effect metabolically that you would become more active of course your body is getting hungrier because now it needs more nutrients because your activity levels are picked up so a lot of times your body signs you have to know what those are and read those properly if you're actually hungry enough to eat like i said 10 eggs in a sitting that's fine the problem is is when you're hungry and you have let's say 10 donuts that's going to yeah. create a problem later on like metabolically and the way you're just your metabolism runs towards like your health effects and also your you know your effects and aesthetics with body fat levels being down so with actual nutrient timing, it kind of goes back to that as well. Just the same way people think it's, you know, so crazy to miss that window. The same way as like them saying, oh, it's crazy for you to eat 20 eggs. But then they're cool with you hitting that window with a protein powder. But they were cool with a powdered starch. Yeah, we just have to turn this upside down and talk about what natural foods can really do. If you're eating a lot of proteins and carbs to fuel your body throughout the day, you know, your body doesn't just all of a sudden lose those. And yeah. you, don't, you don't have it after your workout. Like what I'm saying is if you had a really good meal, an hour hour and a half before your workout like you had six eggs and you had a steak and you had a couple of sweet potatoes those nutrients are still in your system for your workout like you don't yeah. all of a sudden after your workout oh if i don't hit my protein shake i'm done yeah like it's fine you could have a protein shake after you work out but what i'm trying to say is if you have four five six whole food really really good balanced meals that are very very high in micronutrients and you're just overflowing your body with all the right macros and all the right micronutrients vitamins and minerals you're gonna be fine if you don't have your protein shake after your workout like a lot of guys in here you see what actually the best physiques, the most muscular physiques, the lowest body fat levels, they actually don't have any protein shakes whatsoever. So it's not that once in a while a protein shake, a high quality one as well. That's another thing because a lot of ones are not high quality. But a very high quality protein shake at certain points can be of a benefit. But don't feel bad if you, you know, it's more of a mental thing when you say, oh, I missed my protein after my workout. I missed all my gains. It's not true. It's more about what you do, again, consistently throughout the whole day. Because you'll see a lot of people, they just they get suckered into that whole supplement approach from the magazines. Oh, yeah, I hit my two scoops of protein after my workout. But then you ask them, what did you eat the rest of the day? Oh, in the morning, I had a piece of toast and some orange juice. And, you know, at lunch, I had had some, like, Frosted Flakes and some cereal. And then at dinner, yeah, pizza. I had, like, macaroni and cheese and a pizza. Yeah, yeah stuff like that. You actually pizza. hear people. <laughs> there are people that work out, and a lot of them that do that, like, have these processed meals that are just literally garbage for your body. But then they, th they think they had their two scoops of protein after their workout and they hit their anabolic window and it's all good. Mm -hmm. And it's not all good. It's actually, you know, going to cause problems. What's more important is getting the right foods in all day, every day, consistently, week after week, month after month. That's what's going to lead to the body being exactly yeah. the body that you 100%. want. Right. So that's what I would say about that. So not, not that it's not helpful at all. Like I'm not saying, but don't feel like if you're someone that 
What I always tell guys, I mean, this is the way I'll go about it. I always tell people, spend all the money you have on the exact foods I tell you in the meal plan. After that, if you do tell me, Jesse, I have some money left over and I want an extra 1% or 2% edge that I think I can get from supplements, which supplements do you suggest? Then I'll tell you because then it's like those are supplements, exactly what it's called to what your eating is. They don't replace your eating. Like a lot of people would try to have what something I don't like, you know, or actual uh, weight gainers. Like a lot of guys want to gain a lot of muscle real quick. So what's mm -hmm. even worse than let's say like an isolated protein of, lo of low quality is a weight gainer because then it goes back to what I was saying before. In the weight gainers, you have like maltodextrin, dextrose, just cheap sugars thrown in there for extra calories, telling guys to drink milk with it. And, the, you know, the quality of the milk we have here being processed, it homogenized and pasteurized, not good quality stuff whatsoever. So, I mean, you're getting garbage thrown in with that. You're getting garbage with all the sugars. And then usually some low-grade protein like a, like a whey concentrate or some other garbage, and then, you know, you think you're gaining weight, good weight, but you're really not. You're getting a ton of fat, you're causing a ton of inflammation, you're causing a ton of, getting a ton of digestive upset, which people notice, right? They always say, like, oh, I'm, I'm getting, like, you know, protein shits, or I'm getting protein farts, yeah, and it's kind of like a joke, bloated. right? They kind of laugh about being bloated and saying stuff like that, but really, that's, like that's you bad. You shouldn't feel like that. Exactly, you should not feel like that. And over the short, in the short term, maybe nothing bad is going to happen to you, but if you keep continually doing that, that, that does what lead to problems later on. That's what I'm just trying to get across to people. So that's, that's more of the crazy stuff. Like people are so, you know, right away, like for, if I tell someone to have 10 eggs for breakfast, not in my gym, because they know it's pretty normal, but if the outside world, oh, that's crazy. But if you have breakfast bars or breakfast cereals, that's no, with milk, that's normal. Meanwhile, that is not normal to your body. And that causes a lot of problems. And if you really think about it, and think about your digestion, digestion, you'll see when you have those low quality foods or really a lot of times the isolated sugars, like the dextrose, the maltodextrin or the other versions of that I was saying before that are powdered carbohydrates, you'll start seeing there is a lot of, you know, digestive problems. And whether it might not happen right away in the first day or the first week, but then later on, you are going to start feeling bloated and you're going to notice there's mm -hmm. issues with what's going on. So I want to just, instead of saying, you know, the best way to fix a problem is never to have it to begin with. So if you eat properly from the beginning, you, that, you're never going to have those issues. You're just going to be healthy. You're going to be strong. Your gains are going to be a lot easier. So, I mean, notwithstanding, I do understand there are some times when a protein shake after a workout could be helpful. There are times when you do, like I said, in general, what we're talking about here is in general for health. There are times in short-term periods where you might take away a lot of the carbohydrates or you might up your protein. But in general, you don't want to do that. Like, the, And let's just go over a few other reasons why. Like if you have high protein, and don't have and don't have the other uh, macros. Let's say you have something where it's like sixty percent protein. You just keep upping your protein because protein is going to make you gain more muscle. At a certain point, all that's happening is the enzymes in your body that help you digest protein just get you know more efficient at doing that, and you're not getting anything. You're just pissing that protein away, so it's not worthwhile. Also, a lot of uh, nutrients can be taken out of your body when you have high protein. One of them would be like vitamin A, for example. So a lot of times, when people go high protein for long periods of time, their vitamin A levels are really going to be low, which is not good. So what, that's why we want that balance. If you notice in nature, mm -hmm. most of the foods that actually do have high protein in them also have quite a bit of fat in them. And just think about that. Think about all the foods that have protein. Most of them do have fat. And the reason for that is because fat will help you digest protein better. So it's not just about what you eat. It's about what you can digest. This kind of goes back to what I was saying about why you don't want the inflammation. You don't want the digestive issues. You don't want to take out a whole food group or a whole macro group for too long because then it will get back to the digestion issue. Like, it's not just a boat. Everyone wants to be like, what's this magic formula with one of them? Like, take one away or pump one up. Over time, that's going to cause a problem. Like I said, with the protein, for instance, if you keep just pumping your protein up, there's diminishing gains that happen. Like, a little bit more protein than what a normal person has will give you more muscle and more performance benefits. But if you keep thinking more is better, at a certain point, that doesn't happen. It will deplete certain, you know, vitamins and minerals out of your system. And also, it's going to cause, you know, issues with with you not being able to absorb it as well. So there just aren't benefits. You want to have the fat with the protein to help digestion. That's why let's say there's certain protein powders that actually do that. They they have they have um, they have actually fat in with the protein based on the fact that, you know, they'll say, oh, mother's milk, you can see it's fat and protein. A baby gets bigger faster than any other point in its life is when it's, you know, having that. So let's do the same thing and have fat with protein. Part of that's true. I mean, our digestive system does change compared to when you're a baby. But part of it is true. If you look in nature, the actual foods that make something grow is faster, do, you know, as far as digestion goes, even with muscle, it's known. That's why a lot of the older protein powders, like uh, Blair protein powders from years ago, like 50, 60, 70 years ago, they used to have that fat with the protein. That was the idea behind it because they, they knew that you actually, fat helps the protein digest better. So mm -hmm. the companies do that today. What they do is they, they say, okay, fat helps proteins digest better, and then they add a cheap form of fat in there. So it's always about those high-quality fats. You don't, we're not talking about adding, 
you know, uh, vegetable oil into the protein to make it digest better. We're talking about high quality stuff. Like, let's say, for instance, something like avocado. You know, if you mix avocado with your steak or avocado with your ground meat, that's going to be better for your gains. It's going to be better for your performance. You put something like coconut milk, good quality coconut milk or coconut cream with your uh, protein. That's going to help it digest better and you get more gains. That might, you know, that's in something where you really want to gain a lot of muscle and you know you're going to gain a slight amount of fat because in a real anabolic state, you do gain a slight amount of fat with that muscle. It's never going to be 100% muscle. That's another thing as well. So maybe you're not going to do that and you're like two weeks out from a bodybuilding show, but for anyone that's trying to gain weight in the right way, that's why I'm giving you guys that example. If someone, let's say, is 150 pounds, 17, 18 years old, getting into lifting for the first time and their goal is to be 200 pounds, don't take that weight gainer. Make your own, because of the issues that I've just highlighted, make your own weight gainer. Use things, like I was saying, the good quality fats, like the egg yolks in the whole eggs, yeah, the avocados. The eggs in general. Exactly. Yeah, almost, it's almost like a one-to-one -one ratio of protein and fat. It's like the perfect weight gainer, and it's, it's cheaper than buying weight gainer. 100%. I agree 100% with what you're saying. Like, use, use, the, use those real foods. Like, I mean, you have stuff like oatmeal, you have stuff like rice, sweet potatoes. Those are good carbohydrate sources. You know, you can eat those. That's going to help you up your carbs a bit. That's also going to make you gain weight in a good way, too. What I always do with guys, let's say if someone's in a mass gaining phase, you slowly up it. You don't you do not do week to week uh, jumps of, let's say, uh, that's when I might be something where I'm counting. I don't want to gain oh, 1,000 a week. Like if I look at what someone's eating, that's another thing, too. Instead of counting macros, what I always do is like I'll have a baseline with someone and see what they're mm -hmm. eating. And then based on what happens with that, then adjust from there because everybody's different in the way they handle things. Some people... Just because of the way their, you know, insulin works in their body compared to someone else, and that at that exact point, they might handle carbohydrates better than someone else. So you always, it's not necessarily what's on paper with those exact calories and macros. You have to adjust to the actual person. Some people might be able to handle more carbs. Some people may be able to handle less. And if it's less to the point where they're insulin resistant, we want to get them to a point where they're not like that anymore, so they can handle more, you know, properly. So that's about creating that metabolism I'm talking about. So yeah, if yeah. someone wants to gain that weight. Don't do it with the powders. Do it with stuff like how Simon said with eggs. Do it with the avocados. Do it with maybe you might put some oatmeal in that drink. Like you can create your own weight gainer. You can you can put some coconut. It could be coconut milk, you know, in into the rice that you're eating on two three days a week. I mean that's something I'll do. I'll bump up the calories two three days a week with certain people when they want to gain good quality mass and don't want to gain mm -hmm. fat. They just want to gain a lot of muscle. You do it maybe two three days a week where you bump the calories up 500 calories more a thousand calories more so maybe a couple of the meals you've added coconut cream or coconut milk on top of it see when you do it that way you're adding good quality real food that's when you're going to actually get the results you want and not have any health issues it's not about you know dumping two three scoops of a uh, maltodextrin or dextrose into a shake and doing it that way that's just low quality carbohydrates they're just going to cause problems later on yeah so basically what we kind of do here it's really about that metabolic manipulation we give them the baseline and then based off that, you know, as Jesse was saying, everyone's going to respond differently uh, as they should. So then we might add more carbs, we might add more fat, add more protein. But really it's about that metabolic ma manipulation and then helping them reach their goal, whether it's gain, gain strength, gain mass, or lose uh, body fat. And when you do it like that, it happens every single time because, yeah. because the body is healthy. And then they will get to their goal and they're able to sustain it. And it's in a way, too, that people are happy. You know, going back to that example that I was giving you before, like a lot of women will think, okay, now I'm working out a lot more and I'm getting hungrier. It's going to cause a problem. I'm going to gain more weight. Then they're very pleasantly surprised they're actually able to eat a lot yeah. of the foods they wanted to eat the whole time they thought they had to stay away from. Like they'll be like, oh, I, you know, I, don't, I can't eat fatty meat. I have to eat just lean meats and just pure protein and just salads and stuff like that. Well, where salads are obviously awesome for you and certain forms of leaner, you know, protein, like let's say... Uh, different types of fish are very, very good for you as well. That's not the only thing that's good for you. You can actually enjoy a steak. You can enjoy, let's say, uh, you know, once in a while lamb. You can have stuff like that and not have to worry. You're actually helping your, you know, fat loss by doing that. And people mm -hmm. are pleasantly surprised later on once they see they can actually eat more and eat some of the foods they wanted to eat the whole time. And they actually see that what starts happening is what they wanted to happen. And then they realize what they were doing before is actually what was causing the problem. It was causing the metabolism to slow down and get into instead yeah. of fat burning mode, a fat storage mode, right? And we want, and the reason for that is because they weren't getting the nutrients from every food group. They were maybe missing certain micronutrients, and it just stalls the body down to a halt. And later on, now they're able to see, okay, I, now I, I just want to be healthy. I'm working out more. I'm able to eat more because I'm actually burning more calories through the workout. There's certain types of workouts we might do with someone in that situation who are more metabolic. And now, and now it's great. You know, they can eat more, eat a lot of the foods they wanted to eat. They feel better. Like how Simon was saying, 
It's not just you might feel good on the treadmill for that instant or feel good in the gym and feel like crap the rest of the day. He's talking about, you know, having less stress during the day, having better, you know, uh, sleep, sleep uh, energy levels, all that kind of in stuff. General. Right. So it becomes that's why I always say it becomes about being a whole lifestyle where you're just supremely healthy and all your goals are happening inside and outside the gym. And that's what we create here. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, basically wraps it up. So if we want to like touch back on a little few points, uh, basically what we're trying to emphasis emphasize on is just eating whole non-processed like non-industrialized food, nothing man-made, and um, having a good, if you're just a baseline, if you're not peaking for a competition, bodybuilding, or you don't need to shred fat, a good baseline is kind of like a one-third ratio of each protein, fats, carbohydrates, which we touched upon, and saying why, you know, the protein fat balance has to be right. Not by uh, weight, but by calories, right? Yeah, because, you know, the fat, the fat is more than the protein and carbs calorie-wise, so that's what we're talking about, what we're saying, like, yeah. pretty pretty balanced. And if any of you guys have any other questions about some of the specific ones that we were talking about, I can answer those. Like today was more general, and it's about mm -hmm. getting that general point across about eating whole foods and letting that take care of itself and the body take care of itself. But certain situations where, let's say, a guy's coming into more of a prep for a bodybuilding show, there is some certain things we do with yeah. nutrient timing or close to a combine or specifically to lose body fat. So if you have a specific situation you want a more specific question on, there are specific things we do. So, I mean, ask that question, and we will talk about that. But the general part of it, what and what 90 percent of it will be it will always be eating properly will get you towards that goal no matter what it is so i just want you guys to understand that and we're going to go over some more foods and some other ones where you know it can help you get to those goals as well that maybe you haven't heard of before and what i'm talking specifically about is organ meats so with those you know guys in here are showing how to eat things like liver kidney hearts and other organ meats to be able to help you towards your goals because they're so high in those micronutrients and there's some other foods as well. It's like it's not just the eggs. So there's a lot of unusual things we do in here. That's what we'll get into in some other later podcasts. But if you guys have any other specific questions, ask them and we can specifically talk about those. Because it's not, I don't want to give the impression everything's just in general and you just eat whatever you want. It's whole foods and everything just turns mm -hmm. out okay. Like there is specific instructions that people are given. But the general background information of that is that you have whole foods that will get you towards your goals and not towards the supplement powder side of things, which are just going to cause in the end a lot of times uh, ill health if you use the wrong ones. Yeah, perfect. So if you guys have any questions, as just said, just comment the question or uh, DM us, email us. But hope you like the video. Thanks for tuning in.